When we think of horrible diseases, we think, okay, but I'll never get it. It'll never happen to me, right? Well, it definitely could. So today, let's go over the top five most horrific diseases that still exist. Doing the research for this video, I was kind of shocked how common some of these diseases that you think never really happen, well, they can happen all the time. So let's just go ahead and get started with number five, mad cow disease. Now, mad cow disease is a bovine disease, but can be transmitted to humans. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy. It's a degenerative neurological disorder that affects cattle until it infects you. And that's the problem, is that these prions, which is a type of protein that's infected, that's what mad cow disease is, can then be transmitted to humans through eating the prions. Prions are very resistant to all sorts of measures that are taken in the cattle industry and food industry, high heat and things like that. And these prions are mainly in the brain and also spinal cord or nerve tissues. Mad cow disease, to simplify it, turns the brain more sponge-like than you'd want it to be. It affects the brain quite severely and quite quickly. And as you'd assume, this causes neurological issues. So if you have mad cow disease as a cow, you are going to go a little bit crazy. It's going to affect you. You won't be acting like your normal cow self. The disease in humans is called Crutchfield-Jacob disease, and it is transmitted by the human eating the infected brain or nerve tissue of the bovine. And this happens in many ways. Think about eating a hot dog. What part of the cow is in the hot dog? <laughs> All of the cow. It's just kind of a mismatch. And if you ever talk to someone who works at one of these meat processing plants, they likely don't eat things like bologna and hot dogs anymore because it's just really not appetizing to think how these things are made. So you are getting parts sometimes of brain and nerve tissue inside of these products. And that's where you're gonna have these issues. Of course, there are stringent regulations so that this shouldn't happen. It should be very rare, but it still has happened, especially in the UK in the 1990s. And then of course it's happened in North America as well. In the infected humans, you're gonna see psychiatric symptoms such as depression, anxiety, that's how it starts. And then it might turn into memory loss and coordination issues as well as muscle stiffness. So at the very beginning, it's just a bad time. You're having a lot of symptoms. You know something's wrong with you, but you probably don't know what it is. And then as it progresses, it turns into severe cognitive decline, difficulty speaking, swallowing, and if left untreated, ultimately it's fatal. The problem with finding treatment is there is no known treatment or no known cure. Number four, tetanus. Now everybody's heard about tetanus. I'll go get your tetanus shot but most of us don't really know what it is, and it's pretty severe, it's pretty terrible. Oftentimes it's called lockjaw, because what it is is it's muscle spasms caused by a toxin that's caused by a bacteria. This bacteria is often found in soil, dust, manure, places like that, and it enters your body through a wound or a cut. The bacteria produces a toxin, and that toxin affects the nervous system. To simplify it, you cut yourself, the bacteria travel to your nervous system and interferes with normal function. Symptoms such as severe spasms of the muscles, especially in the jaw and neck, this could affect your chest, your back, your legs. We see pictures like this of patients who didn't get treated, didn't have the vaccine, or didn't get the vaccine right after they were to cut themselves or have some sort of wound infected. This turns into difficulty swallowing, breathing, painful muscle contractions. And these muscle contractions can be caused by touch or sound. So you hear something jarring, somebody touches you, and all of a sudden your muscles just go into convulsion and go into spasm. This can also be fever, sweating, high blood, Blood pressure and then eventually it'll be fatal. Luckily, most of us have the vaccine. You get your tetanus vaccine and then you get a booster every 10 years. So if you're not sure if you're up to snuff, if you've had it in the last 10 years, if you cut yourself on a piece of metal or basically anything that's dirty, go get a tetanus shot because you definitely do not want tetanus. Although most people don't die and there's very few deaths per year, this is one of those things where you don't wanna leave untreated and preventative is always better. Number three, flesh-eating bacteria. Now this sounds ridiculous, but it's a real thing. Necrotizing fasciitis. It's a rare bacterial infection that destroys the body's soft tissue. Now we've all seen Cabin Fever, the movie, well, maybe not, I'm old, from 2002, I believe it is. This is similar to how it actually acts, but not quite like this, but it definitely does 
tear apart your tissue, eat your tissue, and turn you into basically a disgusting mess to look at from the outside. The bacteria enters the skin through a break in the skin, such as a scrape, a cut, a surgical wound, something like that. And then once it's inside, it produces a toxin that destroys the surrounding tissue. It can spread very rapidly and it will infect not only the skin, but the underlying fat and then also the connective tissue and then it could spread to your muscles, your organs, and your blood vessels if it's left untreated. If you think you have flesh eating disease, go see a doctor immediately. If you don't, it's gonna be a bad time. You do not want this in the connective tissue inside your body. It's gonna make it difficult to move. It's gonna be very painful. And of course, when you touch the flesh eating disease where it is, it's gonna hurt a lot more than you'd think. What looks like just a rash or a bruise is gonna feel like a hot iron being touched to your skin. This can turn into fever, chills, flu-like symptoms if it's not treated, but luckily there are antibiotics and if it's caught early, you can make a full recovery. If you don't go see a doctor and you do not get treated, this can turn into organ failure and then death. I think you get the point that all of these diseases you do not want, but let's go to number two, one you've definitely heard of, rabies. Now made famous by the office, only three people in the United States die every year of rabies. Rabies kills nearly 4,000 Americans every 1,000 years. Special thanks to Michael Scott's Dunder Mifflin Scranton Meredith Palmer Memorial Celebrity Rabies Awareness Pro-Am Fun Run Race for the Cure, which obviously is helping spread awareness over rabies. In all seriousness, this is a very serious viral issue. If you get bit by something like a bat, a fox, a skunk, a dog, whatever, or even scratched, if this animal is infected, they can transmit rabies to you. And rabies affects the central nervous system. This means the brain and the spinal cord primarily. Once you're bitten or scratched, the virus travels through the nervous system, the nerves, and goes to the brain, causing inflammation and severe damage. Now after transmission, symptoms can start as early as a week, but it can harbor in your body for up to a full year before you start to see symptoms. The problem is once you see these symptoms, which are flu-like symptoms at the very beginning, it's usually too late. First, you feel like you have the flu, fever, headache, fatigue, and then it progresses to irritability, excessive salivating, foaming at the mouth sometimes, difficulty swallowing, muscle weakness, paralysis, confusion, hallucinations. Then you get hydrophobia, so you're afraid of water. This then turns into seizures and then eventually death. Now you can be vaccinated against rabies. If you go to a country where it's known there are animals with rabies or you work with animals that might have rabies, if you're a veterinarian or a vet tech, for example, you likely will get the vaccine, but most people don't. And if you get scratched by an infected bat or skunk or dog or whatever the animal is, or you think that they might be rabid, you can get the vaccine right then immediately. And there are more drugs that could be administered to you so that you don't have to go through the disgusting and terrible effects that will then eventually end your life. This is a sad one because you watch the person degenerate very quickly. It's a slow, terrible death and nobody can do anything about it. All of these have been terrible diseases that you don't want, but all of them pale in comparison to number one, brain eating amoeba. Now we've all heard of this and it's so rare and uncommon, it's almost like a joke or a punchline. But if you get it, it's not a joke and there's nothing funny about it. Nagler phalari is a microscopic organism that can cause a rare but serious brain infection. Now this is found in warm water sources that's always fresh water, especially lakes, warm water lakes. This amoeba does not do well in cold water. So if you're in a hot spring or a warm water lake, you're much more likely to have this amoeba be present and the way it gets transmitted to humans is something that you might not know. Enters the body through the nose, the nasal cavity, usually by force. So if you're diving into a unkept pool or hot water spring, if you're thrashing around, diving, whatever the case is, this is how you're going to have this amoeba go up your nose. You know that feeling of water going up your nose? that's when you're susceptible to this amoeba. Once it's in your nasal passage, it'll travel up to your brain, infect your brain, causing severe inflammation and start to cause damage almost immediately. The symptoms in the first day or few days, very common and mild things that might even think that you have a flu. Fever, headache, jitters, shivers, things like that. So you think that you're sick, Unfortunately, most people don't go to the doctor immediately when they feel these things, because why would you? This is pretty normal to have a cold and then get over it. But then this can turn into vomiting, a stiff neck, 
seizures, and then as it progresses, you'll fall into a coma and then eventually die. The problem is most of the time when you have a brain-eating amoeba, by the time you go seek medical attention, it's already too late and there's nothing that can be done for you. And unlike some of the other ones on the list, this is a very quick acting disease. If you have a brain-eating amoeba, what happens is within a week, you're already in a coma if you haven't had medical attention. I wanna hear from you. What's the most disturbing disease you've ever heard of that you wouldn't wanna get? Let me know in the comments section below and give me an idea for next week's video. And because we do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.